How much is depression costing you? Is the question I'm asking you today. Hi everyone, my name is Nessa and I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. The fact is, there are enough informational videos and books and articles on what depression is and what the symptoms are. Just by educating yourself on the topic, by reading a book or two, or simply googling the subject, you can pretty much get the idea if you qualify and fit into the category of having this mood disorder or not. So I'm not here to diagnose anyone. But instead, I will give you an approximate estimate of what is costing you to stay depressed. Let's begin. If your depression is causing you to not be able to work like you used to, for example, if you're an employee and are not putting in the hours that you did, has your quality of work deteriorated? Do you no longer feel the urge to aim for that promotion or raise that you so eagerly wanted before? Maybe you can't even keep a steady job and go from one place to another just to make ends meet. Estimate all the opportunities or wage loss that you endured due to depression. And if you have your own business, have you become unmotivated and the desire to expand or grow your company has gone out the window along with any inspiration for success? Maybe you're an artist or a writer who has lost their creativity and can no longer find their expressiveness in life. Many people who suffer from depression turn to substance use, such as alcohol and drugs, as a form of escape mechanism. Now, these are just some of the financial costs of depression, which you need to fill in the numbers for, because it varies from person to person, based on the income that you used to have before depression and the opportunities that you will miss in the future if you don't take any steps towards changing this situation now. So take a moment to calculate all that. We're not done yet. What about the emotional price we have to pay if we stay depressed? If we're married and have kids, we're missing out on all the great happy moments that we can build with them. And what about putting our kids at the risk of depression too? We know they look up to us and model their behavior based on what we do. Raising children in a depressed environment increases their chances of going through it themselves. Losing good friends because we no longer want to socialize and interact with them can be costly. But we're still not finished. What about the cost of losing your health due to depression? Anyone who's gone through it knows that depression hurts physically too. Even though we often pair the mental illness with emotional pain, there are enough research and proof that shows how it manifests itself into physical pain as well. So far, these are all rough, general, financial, social, emotional, and physical costs of depression that I mentioned. If each individual who's suffering from depression and is not seeking help or any form of therapy to overcome it, should take a moment and calculate the cost of keeping their depression, just based on the basic list of things I went through right now, you will see that the damage will be much higher than you expected. The next time you think you can't afford therapy, or use financial issues as an excuse, or put off seeking help for whatever reason, seeing how much you already are losing will make you think twice. Since I got your attention towards visualizing and thinking about all the negative impacts that depression has left on you, I want you to do a little exercise practice with me. Close your eyes for a moment and try to take a mental picture of the thoughts you just had about how depression has affected you. If you had to put all that in a single shot, a single image, what would it look like to you? Like painting a picture of it all. Take a moment. 
Now I want you to take that image you just created in your mind and make it black and white. No color to it. I also want you to make it blurry and grainy in your mind's eye. Now take that image and shrink it. Make it small. Like a wallet-sized photo. Now imagine you're moving the image far away in the back part of your mind. You can even pretend you're swishing it like with your finger like you do on a smartphone. Moving it far back where it gets difficult to see. You can pause the video while you do this and take your time with it. Now take a deep breath in and exhale a releasing breath out. When you did that, I want you to start imagining where you would be and how would your life be different if you no longer struggled with depression. What are some of the things you would be doing? How would you look like? I want you to get as detailed as possible with that image and all the positive things that would happen in your life. Take a moment to do that. Like creating a story. Practice that image in your head. Now try to take a mental image of that. Make the image in full bright colors. Make it large in size and clear to your vision. Bring it close. Make it light up. Now take a deep breath in while you hold the image in your mind's eye. Lock in that image while you exhale and slowly open your eyes. You can do this small exercise a few times a day. Do it in the morning before you start your day and once at night before you sleep. Just by shifting your thought to something positive, something that makes you happy, you can change your state of mind. Because after all, depression is a pattern of negative thoughts and negative state of mind. I will have another video to give you more tools like this to use at home to help you train your mind into a more positive thinking pattern. Now, let's talk a little about therapy options. Because of the common nature of depression these days and the fact that it has become the number one cause of disability worldwide, the variety of treatment methods and therapies that are related to this issue has also grown as well. So it's understandable to get confused about which route to take that better helps you. In my opinion, if you're familiar and have enough information and also engage personally with the type of therapy you're seeking, the chances of getting the results here you're looking for also rises. Rather than going to a therapist or a doctor and saying, fix me, or throwing a bunch of prescription medication down your throat and hoping for a miracle, you have to see which method of therapy speaks to you and your needs. The beauty of the art of clinical hypnotherapy is that, I say art because it is customized to each individual based on their condition and needs and personality traits like a custom-made outfit that sits on your body perfectly, taking a shape of you. It's not a pre-packaged, one-size-fits-all kind of therapy. It accesses your unconscious mind through the same language it speaks. You make the decision about how you want to change. The only thing that determines how successful your journey will be is your willingness and desire for change. As a clinical hypnotherapist, having experienced this state personally and gone through making all the excuses in the world to prove to myself there's nothing wrong and eventually facing it and overcoming it, has given me a clear perspective and a better understanding of how to help others to do the same. Understanding the structure and the functionality of the mind puts you in a stronger position when you're fighting issues such as depression or anxiety and many other problems that has been created in the mind, depression is a symptom of negative patterns of thought that have compiled on top of each other 
and are weighing you down by decluttering the mind of these negative thoughts and emotions and replacing them with positive ones, you can get back to enjoying life and appreciating life in no time. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, I urge you to take a step forward and make a first move into a better life. If you have any questions, need to get in contact with me, or make an appointment, you can reach me by email or through my website that you see the link down below. I do offer 15-minute free consultation and will leave the link for the booking in the comment section. If you'd like to get updates for future videos, you can subscribe to this channel. I will end this video with a short quote from Carl Jung. I'm not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. Thank you for watching.